All right, now that we know how to establish a dictionary between two observers who are at rest with respect to each other, let's ask a different question. Let's take two observers, but let's suppose that the first observer um, uh, is, is here and they have coordinate system x, y and clocks of time interval t. Let's assume a second observer who again has exactly the same setup that we had before. So they have the same choice of axes, they have uh, uh, the same length scale, they have the same meter stick, they have the same choice of origin in time, and they have the same choice of uh, time interval. But they don't necessarily, and, and let's suppose that they even have the same choice of origin in time. Let's suppose they have the same choice of origin and time uh, and space. So at when time is zero for the first observer and time is zero for the second observer and their dictionary is T is equal to T prime, both their times agree. Um, so they have the same origin at their zero instant of time, but let's suppose observer two is not static. Okay, let's suppose observer two is now moving with respect to observer one. And the way they're moving is that after some instant of time t, they are displaced by an amount a, okay? But this a is not independent of time, it's a function of time. So the displacement of this origin, let's we call this origin O prime, and this origin is O, okay? The displacement of this origin is a function of time, okay? As a function of time as measured either by the first observer or the second observer, it doesn't really matter since both their times are the same. And now we ask, what is the dictionary that relates observations between these two different observers? So observers, in a state of uniform relative motion. So by uniform relative motion, what we mean is we won't just assume that a bar is any arbitrary function of time, which means that the second set of coordinates is not moving in an arbitrary jerky way as it moves forward, but rather it is some uh, something like this. It's a constant vector Let's call it V naught, or let's call it V relative. Okay, so that times time. In this case, I've taken V relative to be along the x-axis. Okay, so this displacement which is a bar, is no longer a constant. It's changing with time. So as time passes, this origin will move further and further to the right. Okay. And now we want to know how to make translations between these two different observers. That is the observer O and the observer O prime. Keeping in mind the fact that this observer will be displaced at future instants of time with respect to observer O. So that's very simple. We would, we would just say, using our old dictionary, T prime is T and, oh, sorry. We would say X prime uh, 
we would say t is the same as t prime and x vector at time t so the position of a particle at time t would be the same as the position of a particle described by the second observer at time t prime those instants of time are the same but there would be a shift by a vector a bar but this is now a function of time okay and in particular we're taking the specific case where this is a constant vector times a time interval so this is more general for arbitrary motion of these observers relative to each other and this is specific to observers in uniform relative motion okay so this is for arbitrary possibly jerky motion Okay, so this is a specific case of, of this dictionary when the observers are in uniform relative motion. Now, let's ask what happens to the laws of dynamics when I translate between these two ob different observers. So this is the next key question that we will ask. What happens to the laws of dynamics when I translate between these different observers? Okay. So let's take Newton's laws. So F is equal to MA. And let's suppose both observers see the same forces acting on the particular particle. Uh, so let's suppose there's a contact force which is pushing the particle. And both observers agree that this is the same force acting on this particle. Okay. Now, uh, this acceleration is... d square x by dt square, but this coordinate x is different for different observers. So observer 1 sees x bar as a function of time and the velocity or the rate of change of this coordinate, this particle is at location x bar, and now it moves to a different coordinate x bar plus dx bar in a time interval dt. So you would say that uh, the rate of change of its position, that is how much it moves in a time t, this is its velocity at time t. <coughs> and if I want to know its acceleration, I would calculate the rate of rate of change of its velocity. That is, I would calculate the second derivative. And so we want to make a translation between what observer 1 sees and what observer 2 sees. Observer 2 would see a position x prime which is related to x by this relationship. Okay, I just simply took the a bar to the other side of this, of this equation. I just moved this quantity 
to the other side of this equation. And therefore, the speed that they measure. Uh, now, here's something important. The speed that they measure is the change in the position x prime divided by the time interval that has passed for observer 2. And their time interval is t prime. But since we know that uh, the dictionary also tells us that t prime is the same as t, so the speed as measured or the velocity as measured by the second observer is the same as this. And x prime is also uh, can be written as as this, okay? And so now if I differentiate this further, what I get is dx bar dt minus So this is a dictionary that we've now derived for velocities. Okay, so observer two would see a velocity v prime, which is related to the velocity v seen by observer one minus a vector that tells us um, the rate of change of this vector a bar, which is the displacement of this origin as a function of time, the rate of change of that displacement okay, with time. So let's take the specific case. Okay, so this is general. Let's go to the specific case of uniform motion. So if the second observer is moving with a bar of t being this constant vector vr times t, so it's moving with a constant speed or constant velocity with respect to the, uh, the original observer, observer one. In that case, v bar prime would be v bar and this would be okay. So this is now specific to uniform motion. So we now have a dictionary which relates uh, velocities. Okay, so we've learned a new word in both languages. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so observer two sees a velocity v prime, which is related to observer one's velocity v by shifting it by a constant vector vr. Okay, this is of course the case of specific, specific to uniform motion, but for arbitrary motion, the, this more general dictionary applies, which is v bar prime is v minus whatever is that function a bar, however it's changing with time. I differentiate it with respect to t and that uh, that gives me the instantaneous velocity of observer 2 with respect to observer 1 and I take the difference between the velocity of the particle as measured by observer 1 minus that relative velocity of these two observers okay that gives me v bar prime okay so let's write this in words so this is velocity of the particle measured by observer 2. This is velocity of the particle measured by observer 1. And this is relative velocity between the two observers.
Now let's understand this a little more intuitively. Okay, let's suppose you are observer one and you are standing over here and you have a friend who is in a car and she is driving it okay, to the right at a speed of 30 kilometers per hour. And there's a bird flying overhead. And let's suppose uh, there's a bird flying overhead. And let's suppose that the bird is flying to the right with a speed of 10 kilo or 50 kilometers per hour. Okay. Uh, as measured by you. Okay, so relative to you, you're on the surface of the earth and you see this bird moving at 50 kilometers per hour. What you want to know is what your friend would measure to be the bird's speed relative, okay, relative to themselves. So in this case, V, so your observer one, the person in the car, your friend is observer two, and the speed as measured by you is 50 kilometers per hour. The relative speed between you and your friend is 30 kilometers per hour. And therefore the speed as measured by your, of this bird as measured by your friend would be the speed of the bird V minus the relative velocity between you and your friend, okay? So in other words, this would be 50 minus 30 kilometers per hour or 20 kilometers per hour. This is not surprising. As you're moving to the right, the bird relative to you is not, uh, is not moving as fast. It's moving at only 20 kilometers per hour. So your friend would see the bird moving at only 20 kilometers per hour, whereas you see the bird moving at 50 kilometers per hour. The bird is doing exactly the same thing. You just have different ways of describing that physical situation. 